Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today you guys voted for the gun block uh, versus the other option which was, I think it was something else, it was the uh, block permission. So uh, these uh, are a little bit different than your regular dispensers. It actually is similar in the inventory size and stuff like that. Uh, however, if we right click on it, you can see that it toggles the on and off mode. So basically when this is on like this, it basically indicates that it's going to be shooting. And when it's off, then it's not going to shoot if you ship clicked. And then you can add some ammunition and stuff like that. So the slots are basically random from what I remember. Uh, so if we were to right click on this, it should start shooting yeah, there we go and it has a little cooldown delay as well so just wait again okay I'm not sure sir yeah there's bullets in here so it's just um it's choosing a random slot and I believe if we go like this then you'll be able to see what it's doing and every op so often it will shoot a random slot out so it shot the arrow from this one if we were to go over here and pick that up now the delay for them are a little bit um the delay for picking up is a little bit uh short so you might want to change that with the commands but it is possible to pick them up and um you can shoot arrows, uh, the bombs. So as you can see, it's basically randomizing the different slots here. So there's it shot that one, that one, that one, that one, and it just shot these two again. So that's basically how that works. Um, and when it does actually hit something, it does a lot of damage too, right? So um, let's go into M Crater, and then we will quickly take a look at the script before I get scared again from another bomb. There's a lot of little pieces that bring up to make this little project. So I believe there's like four procedures and uh, one range item for the actual bomb itself. And then the item for the ammunition. So there's those for the ammunition and the bombs. And then there's the bomb procedure. And then there's the gun block procedures, which are these ones. There's also the gun block inventory, and then the gun block um, on and off state. So we'll take a look at the inventory first. Very simple system, just a zero to eight slot ID um, system. So there's nine slots in total. And then we can go on to the other one right here, which is the gun block off. So I have it set up so it supports the down, up, north, south, west, and east rotations for the player side. Uh, it's just a solid block, nothing special. Uh, the block boundary is the exact same as default. And I've set the properties to kind of fit into the stone kind of area for the gun block so it's kind of like a stone block similar to the dispenser or um, the uh, dropper as well and uh, I don't think there's anything too important on this page uh, that is worth mentioning all these settings are pretty much customizable uh, the pickaxe thing is custom the hardness and resistance was custom and I think that's about it so that's it and then I have the tick rate set to one this is important for uh, the script so we set that to one we'll delay that through procedures and the inventory itself uh, the material the block color on the map is set to stone this will make it look like a yeah, regular stone blocks and stuff the reaction to being pushed because it has an inventory I've set it to being blocked so it will be very similar to Things like dispensers, furnaces, um, chests, things like that. 
Uh, the it, it is it is a tile entity, so it will require this checkbox to be in, enabled. And our inventory is basically selected here. I do not have it to basically have a right click um, event for opening it. We do that through procedures itself, so it's a little more stable. And the slots uh, slot size is set to nine because we have nine slots in total. And I have the rest of the uh, settings basically the default. No energy or fluid storage and the only procedure for this one is on block right click. So let's quickly take a look at that. So what's going on here is if we basically are sneaking and we right click then what it's going to do is open up the blocks inventory if we're not sneaking then it's going to toggle on the block so as we hover over it you can see that it says basically gun block on so this would be your on block for that and it's going to keep the state of the rotation and basically the rotation of it and it's going to keep the mbt inventory so any items inside of the inventory and any tags and stuff like that it's going to basically keep all right so that's basically that uh, there's no other procedures here generation not enabled so we don't need to actually do anything there just make sure to save and that's good to go <laughs> So the other one is the gun block on. Uh, the only difference on this page is the little texture on the back here. It basically indicates that it's in the on mode. Uh, boundary box, same uh, properties. The only difference here is we're going to drop the custom drop of the block off. We're selecting the off block for the creative pick item and um, it doesn't have a uh, creative inventory, so it's basically no creative inventory tab. That's the only difference on this page. Uh, the other thing is the tick rate is the same, stone is the same, blocks the same, exactly the same thing. Uh, the inventory needs to be exactly the same as the inventory that we're basically using. So s nine slots, no right click event, and 64 for the total size. Uh, both of these are default and that needs to be enabled like the other inventory. Uh, energy and fluid doesn't use and then we have two procedures here. One is the right click event. Exact same thing as the other one. The only difference is rather than turning on the block we're turning off the block but we're also keeping the state basically the rotation and the mbt slash inventory item so basically both of these are enabled for when we turn off the block itself the other one is our update procedure uh, for our update tick which basically controls the shooting mechanics and stuff like that so if we open this up, we can see that there is uh, a shooting timer, which basically counts down from a select number. So our select number every time that it cycles is 100 ticks, which is I think about 20 seconds, if I remember, maybe 10, uh, five, five seconds. Let me just quickly calculate that. I think it might be five seconds. 100 divided by 20 is five seconds, yes. So that's every five seconds it will count down and it will basically loop that system. So when it gets to zero, it's going to reset the timer to 100. And if it isn't equal to zero, then what it's going to do is it's going to decrease the timer by one. All right, so this is where the more important part comes in. We're actually going to be controlling the shooting mechanics after that. So after the timer has subtracted or reset, what it's going to do is it's going to basically test for the shooting timer if it's equal to zero. So if it's exactly zero, so if it's counting down from the last single digit, so if it's on one for a timer and then it will be subtracted by one, 
So then it will be zero, and then it's going to immediately test if it's zero. If it's zero, then what it's going to do is set a random uh, slot for the number. So this is a variable right here, local variable. Uh, it doesn't need to be an MBT variable because we're not planning on storing it. So it's going to set that number to a random number between zero and one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically test for that number between certain values up to um, nine times. And we're going to divide that number by basic, we're going to divide the zero to one number. So our random number, because we know it goes up to one, right? So we're going to divide that by nine our amount of slots and then we get the number for this and then all we need to do is basically add that number uh, to the thing every two times so uh, for example it starts at zero and then it goes 0 0.111 and then the next test is 0 0.111 and to 0 0.222 and so on until it reaches the final one which is 888 and between one so basically that will um, randomize the slot rotation in this little section right here. After that, what we're doing is we're going to test for the ammunition type. So this is where this little box uh, procedure comes in. Uh, basically uh, what we're doing is we're going to get the slot number. Now up here, what we're doing is we're setting the slot number between zero and eight. So if we have eight slots, then our inventory number should be, or pardon me, if we have nine slots, then what the number should be is between zero and eight. So it always starts at zero and then it increases by the amount of slot number. So um, how many slots that we have in there? So what we're doing is we're going to get the inventory item of the slot number. So we already got the slot number when it's randomized. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test for the actual ammunition if it's the same as a certain type then we're going to get that ammunition type here. And then after which, what we're doing is we're going to test for the rotation of the block. So if it's a certain direction, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically shoot the arrow depending on that particular rotation of the block. So this is where the execute command comes in, is we're going to do a few different fun little tricks with the commands to actually summon an entity with a velocity of a certain projectile. So what I've basically done is I've used the summon command, I've set the Minecraft um, tag, which is the namespace for the Minecraft arrow, and then I've used a colon for basically what Minecraft uses for the determining that particular thing. And then we've basically tested for the arrow. And then what I've done is set the coordinates for what works for the actual projectile. Now these coordinates should not update. Uh, if you update it, it might have issues with your um, with you actually shooting the uh, arrow. It needs to be outside on the direction that it's shooting. If it's not, then it gets stuck in the block and potentially, can, depending on how you set things up, it could potentially blow up you or um, the block if you have block uh, damage enabled. After which, uh, then there is the MBT for that particular entity. So that's between the curly bracket right here and the curly bracket on the end here. Now what this, uh, the first value does is it's basically setting the damage of the projectile. So because it's an arrow that has the damage that could be controlled, so it's a uh, value I set it to was two for damage. And then the motion is relative to the direction that the block is facing. So all that's set up by default. You shouldn't really need to adjust the, the motion for the actual block other than adjusting the power of the actual value. So if you're adjusting the value, then all you need to really do is adjust the the number and um, that's all you really need to do for that. Uh, just make sure that you don't delete the, the subtraction sign if there is one, as it could mess things up. 
Now the other thing down here is uh, pickup. Now this is a general thing that you can actually do for arrows. I'm not sure about projectiles because the like the custom range items, I'm assuming it's possible. Um, however, with the bomb that I created, it blows itself up. So I'm not entirely sure if it's possible to pick up those items or not, but I did enable it anyways for custom items. Let me know in the comments if it is actually uh, works with the custom projectiles because I'm kind of interested to know. The other thing down here is the rotation. Now the only thing with the rotation is it is a little bit buggy. Uh, as far as I know this is on Minecraft side because if it was working with the um, actual execute command it would probably spawn properly initially when it's actually summoned and it normally does that most of the time but uh, for some reason it's not um, working with arrows and other things like that so I'm not sure if it's just a bug on M M Creator or if it's more a Minecraft issue I'm kind of leaning towards more of a Minecraft issue because M Creator also has issues with the rotation for that for quite some time now so I have said it it does turn eventually to its direction that is being shot from but it takes a couple seconds for it to basically shoot and rotate from the block that's the only thing there so that's basically all that's going on with that uh, these are all the different directions this one is the down direction um, basically what this does is it's the up and it goes from else so basically the only other side from here is down so that's what else is basically doing after which uh, the only thing that we're doing is we're basically removing one item from the slot that it basically chooses from and then that's all good to go and if you want to add a new basically a new um, range item or something like that you just expand the script and like this this is testing for our um, basically our bomb block with or bomb item and then it's basically doing the exact same thing the only difference really is the uh, namespace so the namespace of your mod goes here and then what we're doing is we're basically setting the entity registry uh, for the actual item down here so the easiest way to get that is in game and then you just basically use the summon command and then you search for your item under the namespace of your mod and then you'll be able to find that and those are the two things that you'll need here the registry for the item or the brain the range item and then you'll need the actual namespace of your mod as well so that's basically all that that does now let's quickly go and we'll take a look at the I believe this is the range item is no this is the actual item so it's basically really a simple item uh, nothing too important it's just a item for the ammunition there's absolutely no procedures just a simple generic item uh, the item here for our actual projectile which is basically our range item itself I have it so it doesn't go under a specific um, a specific creative tab it's uh, just a regular item for our range item nothing too special we're only creating the range item so we can actually create a tile entity or pardon me a particle entity that we can actually shoot like an arrow uh, we're, we don't really need the range item at all so that's why I've just basically sk skipped through most of this um, I've only added the particular texture for the range item and set it up so it's not in a uh, particular creative inventory. So that's all that I've done here. Uh, the bullets on the other hand, this is where I've basically customized it a little bit more. And uh, I've selected our item that we created just a second ago with the um, for that item and then I've basically set any events for the explosions and stuff like that under these procedures here now it's just one procedure uh, what's going to happen is it's going to spawn the particles for the explosion when it actually hits and what it's going to do is it's going to explode with no damage 
with the size of power of four. So basically that happens for every one of these. Um, there's only one procedure though for it. So I've basically shared the procedure because it's the exact same thing. I wasn't expecting too much other things to be added to them. So that's all that's going there. So you can do additional things when it actually hits the block, uh, hits an entity or hits some player. So those are your three options down here. And that brings us to an end. So we have finished the tutorial. If you have any questions, um, I'm sure the community has will be able to answer them. I'll, I'll provide the resources, the actual workspace, and the procedures in a zip file on the GitHub for you guys. So you guys can get all the project um, things and explore it yourself and see how things work as well as get the procedures and stuff. So I'll make sure to link to that in the video description so you'll be able to go directly to the GitHub and download the actual workspace and stuff. So outside of that, that's all I have for you today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.